Bring the meeting to order. Is there any changes or adjustments to the agenda as presented? I'm showing uh, the League of Cities and Towns asking for a resolution to be adopted to talk about that. And uh, apparently Sue Lovering would like the floor for some conservation issues. Sorry, that's all my fault. Did you want to add an agenda item for tonight? I did. Um, the tree board would like to start operating. Okay. We have a chance for a grant, so instead of addressing the January, which I would prefer, we can. So the first item is the board. Are you here for a particular issue? Or? Okay. Board prepared to Thank you. approve the meeting minutes for November 18th. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor, say by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And was there a anything for Rosemary's report other than what we just signed? The order? No, really, just the uh, the orders. Okay. And library trustees report. So I'm actually going to defer to Sabrina and Stacy. Um, I wasn't supposed to be here tonight, but the storm in Rutland changed my plans, so okay. they're, they're prepared to speak. Oh, and Kelly. Kelly's handing out. Okay. So, um, at our November meeting, um, we had kind of a discussion, well, we didn't kind of, we had a discussion on the flood resolution. Um, after how we responded to what happened at the library as well as our budgetary discussion and they kind of rolled together and so we wanted to come here for two purposes um, one of them was to give you guys an update on the flooding of our building and some concerns or questions that we have as a board as well as give you a heads up on some budgetary items coming up for the next fiscal year before you guys really get involved in those discussions um, so as you can see here, we gave you this little sheet. Um, it basically talks about some of the challenges we've had with uh, the library continuing to flood year after year, as you guys are aware. Um, and this is the flood work proof that we've done um, up at the top, um, including sump pump. Uh, we've replaced the basement door um, in 2012. Uh, and then we put these bars on where you can put a board on to prevent the door from coming in. Um, from water um, in 2018. We applied caulking to the windows and we have also recently just had a new furnace. We spent our um, capital budget money this year to have a furnace mounted on the ceiling so that it was no longer affected by flood waters. Um, despite those work um, efforts that we've done, there's still quite a bit of stuff that needs to be done. Um, one of those is we need to replace the five basement windows. They're older, they're rickety, they open, and even though we have sealed them, they aren't preventing water from coming in. And we also want to um, install floodgates. Um, these plans came out of this most recent flood, and the floods are happening more often and more frequently, and we know very quickly. Um, and so during our budget discussion, we did increase our building capital expense um, from $5,000, which is there annually, to $13,700. And that's kind of a heads up for you guys as to why we did that. Those numbers include uh, a, a new dehumidifier, um, floodgates, wetbacks, um, the basement windows I just mentioned that are flood resistant and they're sealed, they don't open. Um, and that also includes some rehab for our parking lot where our little retaining wall is falling over. So that's the heads up on the budget. But three key points that we wanted to talk to you guys about in regard to the flood and the situation that we had. After this most recent flood, um, our librarians were there very early in the morning. And we understood from discussions um, with that Jasmine and Jean had with, uh, I think it was Eric and Brian, that Sterling Market has often been used as an indicator of what the levels of water were. But by the time the water is there, it is already upwards of two feet on the back of the library. Um, and so we wanted to address um, we, how to be on the emergency management plan for the community that the library is a town facility. Um, and so under here for points of discussion, the first one is that um, the library needs to be higher up on an indicator for when, how high the waters are and what buildings there are, are being affected and that the library is an essential building for this community and there's a lot of money invested in that, that facility. And the question rises 
first, is it our library's responsibility to do that? And we as a trustee don't believe our librarians are necessarily responsible for doing mitigation by themselves. So we want to figure out how to get on an emergency management plan, how to make the library more essential on and more um, of a priority on that list. And then as part of that, it would be much cheaper, obviously, to prevent this from the library than to fix it after it's broken. So that's point number two. Um, so we want to be part of that emergency management plan and see if we can get those floodgates. Um, and so right now we are long, looking out long term, we are trying to put those into our own budget, um, but we wanted to maybe put it in your mind or you have a discussion of how can we get floodgates for our facility that we have all this money invested into before the 2021 fiscal year. So is that covered? And Stacey's here if you had any budget questions to discuss how we left it. So. So you'd like to consider floodgates before the start of your uh, 2021 budget season? Yes. Yeah, if there's yeah. funds available I mean, if you, in the town towards that. Um, if you find, get a number, um, we probably have enough money in our emergency management fund to fund that. And then it wouldn't necessarily need to go yeah. in next year's budget. Right. We could take yeah. that back out. I mean, I don't know what they cost, but I can't believe it's... Yeah. I've done a hard number. <laughs> I've uh, spoken to Jane at the post office, and they are putting up the gates yeah. um, on their door. And she's been trying to get in touch with the person from the problem with it. He's been hunting. So um, hopefully he'll return this week and have an estimate because he, they put other ones on the market as well. So he'll have a ballpark. It, it's a worthwhile investment. Yes. Very worthwhile. But the windows are sort of the other key part because it doesn't help us much to have floodgate on the door if their windows are going to bust open. So, so that would still probably that would still go into our capital expense line item for the 2021 budget. Have we looked into? You know, I, I assume that people have floodgate type windows. Do you have, can you check in? So I believe the windows we got an estimate for were. Flood, they're the kind that are sealed and don't open and would be more flood resistant. What we have now are very old, sort of rickety wooden frame windows there. I think you want to inspect them very carefully when you find out. And I'll look at if you have humidity issues, too, but I heard you say the humidifier, yes. but uh, I don't know what the elements that you need to concern with. What's the well, elevation? The windows don't open anyway because they're so old. But they leak. <laughs> but they can't. What's the elevation of the windows from the ground? About three and a half feet. So better? Maybe above the flood. flood We're about four inches from it during the last flood. Okay. What's that right? About four inches from the water up the to flood. the shell yeah, of the window. The no, last this flood. flood, yeah. Yeah, it was close. It was real close. Flood gates, uh, they're like in the two and a half foot range, three feet, that's about their capacity um, up against your back door. Mm -hmm. So it probably would be anything over that floodgate, it's going to go into the Sterling Market. Um, it was very, very close to the Sterling Market. If it goes over their floodgate, it's up to their windows and they would have issues. That would be the same thing with you. Uh, anything goes over the floodgates, then you're going to have water. But uh, Considering this Halloween flood was the fourth highest recorded uh, on the river gauge, uh, if you have flood gates, I think you will do very, very well for most all of the floods. And as far as the, uh, in the pecking order of the flood monitoring, uh, consider it done. I'll, I'll talk to RJ. Um, he usually gets a hold of me when there's concern at the Sterling Market, but we can make it to the library instead. So would the next action step be to, to get some quotes for if you want to, gates and then come back to you? Yeah, if you want to get it done before the you know next budget cycle, uh, come back to us with some numbers and we might have the money available. Thank you. Um, one, one last question too. Um, you know, I read through the emergency management plan that is online and it's in who all the contacts are and that kind of thing. 
on the order. So we would also still need to figure out a process of who we contacted the library and who would be responsible, like who's going to be responsible for putting those those floodgates up because we don't feel it's Jean's responsibility in the morning and we're not, those are some things we still needed to flush out. But um, when you guys review yeah. that. It typically is the responsibility of the property owner. Um, Sterling Market has responsibility for yeah. their market. Um, the fire department will assist if they are available, and that would be the same thing with the library. So, of course, the property owner. The town is a property owner. Yes, The town is a property owner. We're the property owner, but we don't have people that would be out there typically doing that. Um, my point of contact usually is Gene. So, I think we should change that. Um, I don't think it should be Gene's responsibility to install those floodgates. Um, I don't, that's not typically a librarian job description item. Um, and it is our library. It's a, it's a library that the town has invested significant money in the taxpayers. And I think we're responsible for making sure that the assets for the building and the assets in the building are protected. Um, so I think that falls on, if it's, if it's the highway department or if it's the fire department, I think it needs to be one of the two. I would counter that they could be back but both of those groups could be, you know, busy with other things at the time when it needs to be done. What, what are they going to be busy doing? They're going to be busy. I, I, I'm asking the question because I, but because I assume the answer is they're going to be busy protecting and protecting town assets, whether it be highways or buildings or whatever. And this is one of those assets, so that should be on us. I agree to that. We can come back to that and figure it out at some future time. Who's going to have responsibility? But first, I got to get the floodgates. Okay. Just a possibility that people might want to volunteer for something that important and be a big part of, you know, the emergency action plan and being able to have Gene call the person who has been trained in putting them up and takes great, you know, whatever, as a site to do it. Which is what I think our ultimate goal was, was to ask to be part of that emergency plan because as when I read it, the library is not mentioned in the capacity. And if we can do that, and with any disaster recovery plan, I and mean, what's to say Jean's out of town or whomever, I just think we need an order of people that we call that are responsible for that. About 20 minutes ago, we were having the joint meeting, and it was brought up. We were, it was on the agenda for 10 minutes of discussion about the flood. We had a minute and a half, two, and then Scott said something that it was done. And Scott's remarks were sort of just, the response was, we'll consider it. And that's all we got. So that's reached from the village trustees are also trying to get involved in flood management and emergency situations. And so I, it is not the librarian's job to put up the floodgates. It's the town's job. And it's the town's job to manage the emergency scene and make sure that gets done not via the library. She does not own the library, the town does. And, we, and there's no reason why we don't put it in place soon, like tonight. As soon as those floodgates go in, because we're going to get them, we're going to get them ordered, who's going to put them in? Where is that chain of command? There's, it's our library. <laughs> I was down there with my own personal sump pump, the last one. And I just happened to be working in town that day. And there are a lot of idle hands right outside of them. A lot. Probably 26. Watching their cars get flooded. Well, it right. seems to me that, that you know, we can, you know, here at the point, well, what's the fire department doing? What's the, what is our highway department doing? We also, you know, I think that they ought to be first in line, but there ought to be a contingency if, if a greater emergency is somewhere else, what they're doing. You know, there ought to be that pecking order and in the plan that you're talking about. And, and I would note, as I've seen the history of the Sterling Market, and we've talked to them and, uh, about, well, they had these questions. They were, you know, it, it takes a while for people to absorb and understand what their responsibility is. Um, so the more we do ahead of time, the better off we are. And I agree with the hierarchy, but I think that you need a contingency if, that, if we're overwhelmed. Yes. I just I, I, I keep 
keep saying the sterling market, but the sterling market is private business. The library is a town building, a town asset. And the taxpayers just pay, put $5,000 into buying a new furnace for the library. So why wouldn't we want to protect that? I mean, it seems to me that it would be a more judicious use of the taxpayers' money to protect the $5,000 brand new furnace than to, like, argue and, and nitpick over um, whether anyone has time to put up the, from the town, has time to put up the, the floodgates. It's a matter of protecting an investment of the taxpayers. Uh, the sterling market is a private business, and they're owned not by the town, so yes, they have to put up their own floodgates. But to say that Gene, who does not own the library, is responsible for putting up the floodgates, uh, it just doesn't seem, it's apples and oranges. To us, it seems, to us, it seems a little bit like we expect our resources to be taxed, and, and what else can we bring in? And so I think the responsibility ought to be set first. Uh, as Brian said, but then we, if we can't cover it, then what? Then you have a set of trained volunteers who are willing to help out, and you, and, you have, and that's who you call on next. Margo? Uh, Sorry, I'm just kind of like in and out, but um, did, did, did somebody actually say that Gene's responsible for putting up a floodgate? No, we're trying to decide that. We don't know. What we don't have a decision yet yeah, on how we yeah, it. But it was sort of, wasn't said, but... Yeah. No, it was said. No, it was said. It was said. Yeah, that's not a good idea. Well, Mr. Chair, <laughs> I mean, I'm hard of hearing, but I kind of, I kind of got it that we were going to take responsibility. The town was going to, the town crew or the fire department. And on top of that, we were going to have a contingency if they were not available. Is that where it was? That's where I thought it was. We need to take responsibility for our town building, period. Okay? And so then we need to designate somebody on the town crew to take care of the library. Simple. I mean, you don't, we don't have to study this to death. This is something that, that we can actually do. Yep. Are you going to have to give them a raise? <laughs> what would you say? And insurance. Are you going to have to give them a raise? <laughs> they should be responsible. Anything else? Thank you for coming in. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, to the yeah. Committee report. No motion. No motion. So, uh, the, the action on that. Uh, can we just Thank you. Yes. The action on this then is that the library board is going to come to us with an estimate for floodgates, correct? Yes. We're going to find hopefully the money in our emergency preparedness budget. Mm -hmm. and. And then it's, we're going to have a discussion among us on among who's responsible for it. Stop. Yep. Okay. Just wanted to make sure we had that all clear. We know that we know the town is responsible. Well, I, yeah, I think most. Yes. Okay. Did I hear you say earlier too? I don't know. I think it was at the earlier meeting. Maybe I just have to tell end of it that you guys are reviewing the emergency management plan anyways. Every year we do. Okay, so you are. So it will take okay. time. Thank you. We're also having an event on December the twelfth, twelfth at nine a.m. to review. Um, an emergency management exercise that we did a week before the flood. So if anyone from the library wants to be involved with that. As well as the flood event from Halloween too. Right, thank you. Okay. So you said there was no Tuesday Night Live report from anyone? Uh, uh, I don't see Howard. <laughs> no. Uh, I gave Howard 725, so he might he might loop him back in. Okay, I'll come back to it. Uh, give Sue the floor for the tree board. Sure. Uh, the tree board's been talking about starting an arboretum for the last year. We've done a lot of research on it. Um, the number one, what we need from you is a piece of land, the use of a piece of land. Uh, we're not asking the town for any money, which is not to say we'll never ask the town for any money. But right now, I've just heard about a canopy grant worth $5,000 that you may be able to get to get this thing off the ground. The application is due January 17th, which means it's a real hurry up sort of thing. Um, 
what I need to be able to tell them is, um, is a basic plan, and we need to know where it would go. So we had talked about the Duba field, but apparently that has to be an athletic field. I don't know. We checked, I did check the deed on that, and it does say in the deed that it was granted to the high school for use as an athletic field, and that all subsequent owners would follow the same views. Um, we could, what I mentioned to, to Sue about this, this might be a good fit for a mixed use field that we've never used the whole field for, that the whole parcel for baseball or anything else. So if we could come up with a plan that went part of the field to the Arboretum, we might be able to use the other part for another purpose. Um, you know, especially, I am not aware of a lot of the literature around dog parks, but there has been an interest in this property as a dog park. We can find any literature that relates that to an athletic field. It's sort of. What about when you they all, they all well, like to go on an athletic field. <laughs> people run with their dogs. I, I, we're not going to, you know, stretch too far. But I don't know what the literature around do dog parks support healthy communities. Um, you know, can we? Is, is there a real argument to be made that they're not a facetious, we think they're the same, we'd like them to be the same, but is there, is there a real relationship between, between that? How much space do you think? At least a couple of acres. Um, the smallest arboretum I could find is the Morrison Arboretum in Oklahoma. It's probably about three acres. You can pack a lot of plant material and education into a small piece. Then you got the other library, which is like 200 acres. You'll probably never get there. But we've been down to the new field and looked at it. There's not enough room for a baseball field and any concentration of trees down there. Yeah. We'd love to have the whole piece simply because we'd be able to make a, a statement in there, make something out of it. Um, we had talked about doing a couple trees here, a couple trees there, and then having a walking tour through Johnson. The problem is you can look at a lot of places in Johnson and say a tree would be good there and you can't put it there because the sewer lines are electrical stuff. So um, keep coming up against a wall here. And we do think that long term it could be a real economic development project. With the college town? I would suggest that. I would. Yeah. Because it could be a resource for them, too. Sure. And the studio center. Yeah. Um, it would be good for education. It would be good because it's unique. What about down at the skate park? Well, there again, they're putting in a basketball field. I think that. There's everything on the east of Westcombe Road that isn't being used by anything right there. Is that what Howard, you have an opinion on that? I, I do. Uh, we've talked, long talked about having it on the west, the, uh, the east side of Westcombe Road, between there and the riverbank. Mm -hmm. There are trees. It's a long stretch. Uh, it's quite large and be easy to fence. There's no water there if you want to, you know, that would, that would be an issue if you want to have, if you want to have pressurized water for filling dog bowls and all like that. That, that, that I think we're on the Arboretum. Oh, what's that? Yeah, Arboretum. On the Arboretum. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about no, Well, that was kind of in there, but that we moved on. Ah. <laughs> Never mind. I <laughs> would <laughs> say not have a dog park in an Arboretum because dogs can be destructive. Um, Do you have to have a piece of land to make the uh, rack application or to have a lightly successful one? They like they'd like to see a basic plan of some sort. I mean, I can make a vague statement, but I want to get the money. So um, the more concrete I can be, the better. Then you use lost so many trees at the last so, one. So, yeah. so um, how, how many acres is that? I don't know. I have no idea. On the other side of the street. 
Uh, oh, it might be one plus or minus. Uh, it, it's, it's a long, narrow strip, you know, and it's, that's what it is. It's full of pine trees. It's where conservation put the bad houses. I guess so. I don't know. Would that be acceptable, sir? I'd have to look at it. Uh, if it's full of pine trees, now we're leveling a forest, which gets very expensive and seems okay. ridiculous. Open land would be better. Well, it's not full of pine trees. There are three or four that would be in the way. But it's mostly, it's mostly mowed grass. I think I know the piece you mean. I don't think it's good enough. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. One of the challenges that REC has had with Duba Field and why they're not using it more is that the access to it has been restricted, one, by uh, somebody parks in the access frequently, and somebody, a uh, neighbor, this has been reported to me, from other people, uh, a neighbor who has a dog that uh, is intimidating to children to try and walk past, past mm -hmm. there. So whatever we we'll, you know, want to do with that piece of property, we need to resolve those, those issues. Mm -hmm. Scott? Yeah, I think it would be wonderful to collaborate with NVU. I mean, mm -hmm. we've talked about this. We talk about it every year. And um, with the amount of below down that they've had up there, it might be a good place to sort of Regenerate some of the dead fall that's happened. And it would provide a learning opportunity for the students up there, and it would be a nice collaboration between town, village, and college. It's more accessible yeah, to the groups. It's, that's a really wonderful idea for everybody. You mean to locate it there? Yes. yes. I never thought of that. Because the whole along the pathway that goes it's from Dibden to, to the parents' student housing. That all a lot of those trees came down, and that, mm -hmm. whole, and that has Huge amount. wet, it has dry, it has a lot of different possibilities for slope, so you could get some different things growing. And the trees that are left are really unstable. Yeah, it, I think someone might be really happy to have some of them cut yeah. down before they get blown down. And it would be a nicer phase for the university too to have instead of you know the like wind torn zone, have it a nice arboretum. I think it would be wonderful. They might be jump. But what if they close it? <laughs> then I mean, they, they maybe you could make it. That's, that's not, not going to happen. As a right away. But it's state way. It is state way. Yes. That would be tricky. So what do you need from us tonight? I need ideas as to where we can put it. So are you saying the Duba Field is off the table? If it's not large enough to do shared use, and the dog park was just idle, hmm thought because it's, it is a request that we've received for that field of, mm. to change it that way, but it follows the same thing that it has to, our, our deed says it has to be used for an athletic field, so anything that's not an athletic field needs to be shared use. If there's not enough room there for you to do the Arboretum and share it with some kind of athletic use, then that's not going to be a, a suitable location. Yeah. Um, other town properties, uh, Go home, Pringle. Yep. <laughs> Lots of trees. Lots of trees. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were thinking it might be ideal to have it in the village because, or quite near the village, because it would be walkable. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't have to be. So I guess the best option off the top of our head that we can think of is opposite the Westcombe Road skate park area. Okay. Other than that, I'm not sure of any other town problem. I, I'd be yeah, happy to have a discussion with Brian and Sue and nice the deans uh, because I've had occasion to look at that property pretty deeply recently. And, uh, and I would offer you some ideas, uh, but I, I'm, I'm not prepared to do that. It uh, would almost be an executive session because of uh, potential litigation. Because of what? Potential litigation. Yeah, uh, not saying it's likely, but I just don't want to say, well, this is a legal situation. And, uh, mm. Mr. Chairman, is that still a question? Yeah, go ahead. You, no, I guess you're not done. But, no, I was going to ask Doug, is that something you want to take out of here and meet with Sue at some point? Sure. Or come back to the board? Sure, and then I'd like to loop Brian in because my opinion differs from his on that. And there are well, other aspects in terms of access. 
What could you take from us to, tonight? A letter of support? Would that help? As well, sure. Yeah. So make a motion, Mr. Chairman. Do we support that in concept? Would you like to hold that motion until Doug has an opportunity to meet with Sue and look at the property? Well, you have a deadline that you have to do. January 17th. It has oh, is it that far? Okay, I'll hold it. I was thinking we had it like two weeks or something. And I saw, oh, I saw her hand up. <laughs> yeah. I was just wondering, I mean, I've seen the arboretums or the walkway paths and stuff where they have like the little exercise where they, they have the little stations. I don't know if it would meet the dual, dual use if the base pump was not being used. It might be something that they could incorporate where you could do a path and they have, you know, like the polar bars or the yoga mats and all that stuff yeah, you know, incorporated yeah. in it. I, I, that sounds like it would fit the definition to me. That's a good idea. idea. That would work. Perfect. Sporting clays. <laughs> well, the tree board discussed, you know, putting a diamond-shaped path through it, and, you know, from that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So why don't you call me? Okay. Thank you. So we'll, give, we'll come back to that at a future time. Uh, why don't we deal with the, the resolution from the lead sure. the discussion? Uh, we don't have a copy of it in front of us, but I sent out to everyone, the League of Cities and Towns is requesting that all towns and cities adopt a, uh, a resolution, basically asking the state uh, with legalization of marijuana that to uh, allow the towns to, yes, pass that right, refresh anybody. Uh, allow the towns to uh, gain revenue from it, uh, be able to opt in, opt out, that sort of type of authority that other communities in other states have that have legalized it. Uh, the league's been fighting very hard for this. There is a bill, as they refer to, that uh, passed the Senate. It's over in the House. They anticipate it's going to go very quickly to the House at the beginning of session. <clears throat> Do they want to amend that bill? They just want to make sure that whatever is passed out of the House and ultimately is built and goes before the governor looks out for the towns and cities' best interest. And we don't have to go on it tonight, but I guess you did want to address it. Yeah, I'm happy to, to Have say you seen a copy of it? Things. Yeah, I have a copy. Oh. I have an extra copy, too, if anybody needs it. Um, the, um, there's a lot of things in here that just kind of are designed to protect the town. You know, um, So looking at, can the town um, put a tax in you know, to be able to, because when you legalize uh, cannabis or marijuana, there's increased expenses, um, medical expenses, law enforcement. We've even seen um, with hemp growers the increased stealing of their, their crops. So these are things that we need to consider as well as the impacts on youth. Um, and um, so they have in here the right to opt in. So the town's people being able to take the time to talk about it and weigh what are the impacts of this? You know, odors are one of the things that they often cite. So is it going to be in your town center? Is it going to be right by the rail trail? Where are the growers going to be able to be allowed or processors? You know, so those are things that this wants the towns to be able to continue to have some level of control over. Um, so um, my hat is I work with Healthy Lamoille Valley, more substance prevention coalition. Um, and so just and there's a lot of good stuff in here. Um, but just making sure that towns continue to be able to um, do the opt-in or opt-out, um, looking at outlet density, you know, how, does our main street become 21 and over stores that are selling marijuana, you know? Or can we say, okay, we're going to restrict it to, you know, four retail locations in town, and they need to be in these areas. And I know we don't have zoning, um, so it becomes trickier. Um, but those are the sort of things that, that this um, protects. Um, other things are resources out there. Um, the Department of Health today had a uh, cannabis public education uh, campaign. Um, so that just went live today. Let's talk cannabis. Um, and then there's also just the 
possibility of looking at healthy community policy. Um, and this is one that Hyde Park adopted April 15th. So good precedent in our area if there's you know, a desire to go deeper um, in protecting kind of the, the makeup of our towns, um, both for youth as well as you know, little buildings. So this is a, a good step towards us. Thank you. This resolution, um, to me, it reminds me a lot of um, the similar reg uh, regulation that's in place for alcohol sales. It goes through a select board and there's a, there's a fee. And um, it's a lot of those same sort of things. So I would be supportive of that. And I move that uh, the slide board supports that resolution. I move a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. I motion second. Any more discussion? Yeah, I, I think that we ought to ask our legislators here. I'm actually opposed to this in spite of my wonderful neighbor. Um, uh, I think that this is rather like having wet towns or dry towns, and I think this ought to be regulated on a state level. I think it's I think it's focused locally, and we ought to think in the whole. Uh, and I think we ought to think about uh, why people have, uh, why marijuana legalization is, is proceeding, and, uh, and approach this thing very carefully. And I'd, I'd like our legislators to tell us what they see in this and, 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 and on the state level, what they, what they would recommend. So I, I, at the very least, want to have this uh, deferred and ask our, uh, both our senator and our representative here to talk about this. As a, just a point of information, I guess, I would be inviting our legislators our next regular meeting anyhow. Um, is there any comments from the public? If there's not a deadline on this, we can postpone it until next week. They need it before the session, correct? Yeah, they would like it before the session, obviously. And, you know, obviously our three legislators are three of 180. Uh, so what they may feel is yeah, should happen or shouldn't happen. No. The, the league is our organization that looks out for all towns and cities. I'm not going to withdraw until the motion. Were you going to withdraw your motion? No. Okay, so motion is still on the floor. Second still on the floor. Any more discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. And the chair votes in favor. Motion passes. Do you have a copy for me to sign? Or I can come in later and do that. Okay. Uh, I guess get into your report. First thing up is Jenna's promise. I think it's got a Tuesday night line. Tuesday night line is ready. Oh, sorry, Howard. Okay. Up again. I enjoy okay. these meetings, so I don't have to be a part of them. <laughs> so I'll be brief. Which, yeah, right. that's a first. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the two, given the new bona fides and uh, regulations regarding Tuesday Night Live, our uh, subset as being member uh, subset of the town. Uh, apparently, we uh, in our annual budget uh, at the at the end of the fiscal year, if we have money left over, it goes back to the taxpayers, quote unquote, as I understand it. And since the, the phrase back to the taxpayers is, is, uh, is inappropriate in this case because in fact the money was not raised from the taxpayers in any way. It was raised by the fees that we charge for TNL and passing that and all like that. So uh, we are loath to give that up to the taxpayers. But what we really want to do is build up a kitty uh, over a couple of years to be able to uh, flesh out our sound, sound system, which is now by and large on loan us. So we would like to uh, have um, permission from you folks to uh, set up a reserve fund um, so that we can hang on to any excess that we have uh, from the summer to roll into the next year. So that's why I'm here. So it's you Obviously, you generate your revenue in yeah. the spring, yeah. and it's dedicated for bands payout during the summer. Right. Which is and, and, and what other, we have a lot of other 
That's a skill. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it might be the cleanest way, but um, is, isn't Rosemary able to? We can encumber funds. Yeah. So we can, money that's committed to an expense, we can finish spending it. Correct. Even across budgetary? As I understand it, yes. Yeah. But to encumber funds, we need, don't we need to say? The more detail, the better we have for that, and the more justifiable it is. So at a certain point, what are we comfortable with? Uh, are we more comfortable with creating a reserve fund that allows, you know, no tax, we can write it into the description of the reserve fund that no taxpayer fund will go into this reserve. Right. Uh, and that allows a great deal of freedom for Tuesday Night Live to spend money as throughout their season. Uh, or do we want to do it mostly on uh, encumbering funds and kind of making our best predictions as to how the money will be spent? Uh, but the, the, the money raised, from, especially from sponsors and uh, vendors, uh, food vendors, is given to the town of Johnson for the purpose of, John, of Tuesday Night Live. I mean, there's legally there's yep. no other, we can't spend that on anything else. So yeah, that's that what encumbered me. Purpose right. that we've that we're raising the money for. So then, does the reserve fund then become unnecessary? Because it's already for that purpose. We can't spend it on anything else. I'm, I'm not sure how helpful this is, but um, the money that's raised is in one fiscal year and it's spent in a different fiscal year. So that's why we need to which Brian and I spoke about encumbered the funds. Um, from the previous fiscal year to the next fiscal year. And then Howard is talking about, in addition to that, if there's a way that we can, so we can actually account for most of the money that we're going to spend and that we've raised in a previous fiscal year. Does that make sense? Yeah, but regardless of what year you're spending it in, you're raising it for Tuesday Night Live. Yes. Right. Yes. So you're, you're raising this money for Tuesday Night Live, not 2020, not 2019. You're raising it for Tuesday Night Live. So if you raise it for Tuesday Night Live, it's there for Tuesday Night Live. We don't, we run able to spend it on anything else. Well, I don't know how that sits with the statute that says that has to come back, go quote back to the taxpayer on quote. Can but we, I mean, we got a little bit of time. Because yeah. obviously if we need to put it uh, before the voters, it'll be the end of January before we have to make that decision. Right. But can you guys get I'll into a little bit more work with Rosemary on. See if we need it or if we should have it. Yeah. Um, uh, details on, on Nat's point of in, it being encumbered as we receive it, not as we're spending it. Similar to the historical society. When they, yes, but they have a reserve fund. But they fund. did establish a reserve fund. Which is what we would like to do because I just think it's simpler and cleaner than anything else. It, it, it might be, be complicated, Mr. Chairman. It might be the right answer. And what do you need after you have a? Uh, but the voters have to approve. Uh, what capital expenditure, large capital expenditures, do you have after you have a good sound system? And what's the life expectancy? Well, is that, how well, is your projection of expenses in the future? Uh, uh, past the sound system, they're not very great. Um, but the sound system is going to be probably fifteen thousand bucks after a while. We can't do that one year. So um, I mean, that's just a guess on my part, but I think it's, it's up there. What's your surplus? What do we got? About 3,000. 3,000 this year. Right. That's, you know, like the skate park, but that's a slightly different model, of course, because when we want to build a concrete feature, that's many thousands. It's not just popular squash. Um, <laughs> that's what it thinks of your idea. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like that. Uh, so this is this 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 has this has a finite use. I will admit because we don't really need. We're not, ten years from now, we're not going to need the reserve fund, by the way. And we'll simply adjust our income to suit what we need for operating expenses. I I, I say that, but the Tuesday night live keeps growing. Who knows? We may have a demo arena. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah. let's let them check into it. Maybe we don't need it. Maybe we should get it. We'll put what? it before the voters. Okay. Does this have to go before the voters? I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A reserve fund does. Does it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to stand up and complain over it, but, you know, until the enlarge, until the, the population at large. Uh, one other thing, um, okay, so where does that stand? So you guys are going to just... We're going to follow up a little bit between okay. Rosemary and Brian. Well, one other thing is that uh, we discovered last summer that we have that two or three porta potties ain't enough. Uh, it got pretty nasty. Uh, so we have reserved three standard uh, portalettes plus one handicap. And we anticipate those being there uh, certainly for the eight weeks of the concert series. The question is, you know, the, the, the Legion field gets used for other, uh, for other things that don't have anything to do with TNL. And we would beg you folks to pick up the cost of one, one of those portalettes through the summer. And that's, that's a request. Consider the official my pocket swag. <laughs> That's certainly not unreasonable. No, probably not. Okay, all right. Well, yeah. now you've heard my spiel. You got anything to add? Okay. We're good. Thank you. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Jasmine had to leave. Brian, are you, do you do the bread oven with her? Or? No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 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 but we'll report this. He don't know nothing. Did I know? Um, the bread oven sees a lot of use throughout the summer, and I think that I think that having a portal there for the length of the summer, it would see use and it would be uh, a justifiable expense for the, the whole town. Yep, sounds good. Okay, going to your report, Jenna's promise, first thing. All right. Uh, so I'm going to ask Barry or Greg to give a little bit more detail and information about this, but. Uh, Basically, they're going out for a USDA grant, um, and this is the community's opportunity uh, through public participation and through the select board uh, to weigh in on our support of their uh, their application. Correct. So, what we're asking for is um, a letter of support from the town saying that they support. Janice promised receiving the grant money and their overall support of the um, what we're doing at Janice Promise. And specifically over at Janice's house. Because the, the money that we get for the grant would be targeted for that building. Good. Let's do it. The most I move that we uh, write a letter of support for the Janice Promise with State Grant. Second. Second. Any more discussion? When do you need a pie? Um, December 13th. December 12th. Okay. Well, I'm sure we're on the line. Yes. You're going to move with the chairman's side? Uh, yeah, i authorize Eric to sign it. Second. Second. Thank you. Any other discussion? You want to know a little bit more about what we're doing? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, it would be good to have some bullets. <laughs> So the money will be used uh, in the building will be used for a, an audio and a visual uh, upgrade. So um, we could have like rented out for a business meeting. Everybody will be able to connect anywhere in the world. We'll have a big screen that comes down on the uh, well, we used to have mass, we call it stage now. I don't know what we did call it before. Altar. Altar. The altar. There we go. So I, I used to go there too. So, uh, and this screen will pop down. We'll have a long throw uh, projector. projector and uh, internet connections throughout, um, new wiring. Uh, we think when we, and one of the things we want to do with this uh, big screen is to have like a movie night for kids in town so they could come and, and watch a movie that maybe some couldn't afford to go to if we can get them. Um, that's one thing. And the other is 
<clears throat> we want to rent it to businesses in our community in Lamoille County and around some of the uh, people we've already talked to are very interested because it's uh, going to a nonprofit. It's a good cause. And this will be, we feel, the premier space in Lamoille County to have a meeting. That's how much the technology and Barry's done most of the pricing. I'm speaking <laughs> technology, which I don't know much about, but uh, that's kind of what it's about. You know, upgrading the building so we can have events and speakers and in, in, in a way, our nonprofit, what we're trying to do is create jobs and uh, money to support what we're doing, right? So it's a little different model because we can be a different model than most nonprofits. So we feel that floor, once we get it fixed up properly, will help us generate revenue to keep keep everything going. So that's that's kind of what it's up to. Now, we're not doing too much downstairs with it. Um, it's mostly on the main floor. So do you got any questions? Or? You think you could get Greg and get some bullets and draft up a letter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we can put something together pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, the town has, I think I overheard the town saying they could do some space now and then to hold a meeting and well, we would love to have, to have a meeting at our space once it's up and running. Good community use. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we don't, you know, that's part, you know, you know what we're about, but if we want to get the community involved, try to reduce the stigma for people in recovery. And it's pretty important to, because you know, when these folks are in recovery, they're no different than anybody sitting here. They really are. So we got to bring that together and give these folks a chance. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, seem like the same eye. Aye. 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 Those opposed? So, uh, I guess Brian will get with one of you and yeah. get something together and I'll sign it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll shoot you through a message in the morning about setting up a meeting, but I think Thursday is going to be probably my target for that. Okay. One of us can be there on Thursday. Okay. Budget, budget priority discussion. So this is where I kind of see the bulk of our meeting. Uh, I think for, for this is uh, I'd really like to spend a little bit of time talking about our budget priorities and what we want to see out of the budget. Less specifics and more. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of conversations about what you know how. The, the, the difficult nature of affording a lot of the things that we're being handed, but we're being handed, you know, sometimes some pretty serious increases on a number of the uh, costs that we don't have a lot of control over. Um, you know, we, we know that our, our health care costs are going to go up quite a bit. We know that our, there's going to be a raise with the sheriff's budget. We're, we're getting revised numbers on that, so we don't know what the increase is going to be, but uh, we can be pretty confident that there will be an increase. Substantially lower than the first. Yeah. Yeah. The draft that uh, Nat and I have seen is already lowered significantly. Um, and Roger asked for a little bit more time to bring it down even further. So I'm expecting, I, I, I'm hoping for good news when we meet with him tomorrow. Uh, so what I'm really looking for is some specifics. Uh, you know, what I, what I think is that we have an interest in maintaining level services. But level services, with these cost increases that are out of our hands, you know, is going to mean a, a decent budget increase. Uh, if we're going to target a lower growth number that we've got to, that's going to change the nature of the discussion and that's going to change kind of the draft and, and what we see. So I, I want to have a, our first discussion about our priorities. What is our guiding principle for making a budget this year? Is it a, a specific growth number that we're going to aim for? Or are we 
same level services or are there any major projects that we think are, are important enough to rise that we're willing to pay for them? Can I ask a question in terms of, this is, as to how we're, I realize this is the order we're working in. The next one is the review dilapidated building ordinance. I'm wondering how much time you think that would take. As a, you know. I think that our review of the dilapidated building ordinance will be very short. It depends on how much Doug gets involved in the discussion. <laughs> I, I hopefully, what, what I'd like to do is see if we could move that before we get into this longer discussion, if, if the chair would entertain it. That dilapidated building thing has been going on for 10 years. So are you, what we've, okay, if we move that to the, the topic for the discussion now, are you prepared to make a motion on it? I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. He is? <laughs> well, I'm depending on what I hear from Brian. Okay. Um, because, because you just want to see that. What, are you planning on leaving? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it's, uh, I, I'm worried that a discussion that we're going to take over several months on budgets would move this back four months. Oh, no, it'll be the next item. This is just a general discussion on the budget. <laughs> it's it's most of the meeting. I, I think it will take a decent amount of time, but, but we'll get to we you. can do. You're in charge. Yeah, we'll get to your dilapidated building. But Brian, like you said from the outset, there's 15.3 percent increase in a two-person plan for health care. Yes. So That's out of control. We're facing a lot of things that we don't have a lot of control over. So what's our priority is? Our level services are first priority, and we're going to set a budget that has as little impact on services as possible, acknowledging the reality of, you know, that we can't just increase it whatever we want, but what, what's our priority? What's the, the first guiding principle? Is it level services, or is it cost controls? Well, I it's like pornography, you know it when you see it. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what Doug talks about. <laughs> the point is, we need the, the least amount of burden on the taxpayers in the town of Johnson, period. And, and we can deliver that, and we can, we will have the least, we will have the least impact on our uh, services as we can. You know, we'll maintain services as best we can. Um, but we will also, and we'll have the least increase, but I, I need a little bit of guidance on. Well, typically, of course, there's, there are those that are beyond our control. The sheriff's budget, the cost of health care increases. Um, you know, some of those are beyond our control. As the individual town boards and committees and the highway department, et cetera, come in with their budgets. Um, quite often there's a, uh, if money was no object, this was our wish list. Well, then the reality hits and, okay, no, you can't have a new grader every year. And we go through it and make our cuts. And we usually are able to come down somewhere in the range of the inflation every year. Hope that we'd be able to do the same thing. I expect we would. I expect so. I think that's what I'm. Okay. And, and that, that's kind of what the direction I want to hear is. Yeah. You know that that's a guiding principle for us is. Uh, I mean, Brian Carson should come in not trying to control his budget beyond reason. He should come in with what he thinks he needs for the highway department to do the best job that they could do. And then we have to make the hard choices on, you know, no, you can't have that much money. Can you cut back here, work with him? But his first draft should be something of a, you know, a wish list of what he would like if money was no object. Okay. That's the way I've always. money is an object, and we will. And that's when we have to make the hard choices. And we'll ask him if he had to let go of something, what would he let go, and why? Why would he yeah. make those choices? because it's clear that we're going to be under more pressure this year to protect our citizens than we've been under in 
pastures. Right. Uh, that, I that guess help? it's a relatively simple discussion, but that helps quite a, helps me quite a bit in terms of how I'm, what we'll be presenting and, and what you'll we'll be making decisions on is, uh, Okay. Are you ready to move on? I am. Okay. Uh, that didn't take long. No. No. I, a false forecast. In, uh, yeah, that was a bad <laughs> reading on my false start. Instead of the dilapidated building, did you want to go on? <laughs> <laughs> the stop sign warden? I, 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 lose, I lose one vote and I'm off. <laughs> We still haven't taken up your stop sign order. I smile every time I see that on the agenda. All right. My copy printed this out of order. I don't know if that happened to anybody else or not, but my, my second page, I have page one of the ordinance and then page two is the disaster nexus statement. Mm -hmm. uh, so that goes for the audience too, if you picked up a copy off there, it, your pages might be out of order also. But we have received word from our attorney about uh, the nuisance properties, uh, that it does not interact with our other ordinances uh, that this has been implemented successfully in other towns. I haven't had much of a conversation with uh, Bill Fraser in Montpelier, but this is based on uh, the ordinance that Bill has there. Uh, they're quite happy with it. Um, the only change that's going to be made to this is page two, section four, or excuse me, page two, Section three, number four, is going to be changed from nine VSA chapter 139 to, to chapter one. Chapter 137. And that will be the only change made to this draft. Are we ready to begin the process of posting notification that we will be adopting the ordinance? So moved. On second. The motion is second. Any discussion? Doug, when did you start this? Ten years ago? Oh no, probably seven. Well, what's three years in my crap, so? <laughs> Been a long time coming anyway, to look at it. Any other discussion? Anybody from the uh, public? Don't tear down my coffee shop yet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll give you a year. <laughs> I think there's a couple of buildings ahead of you. <laughs> but get the notice off, you don't see it. <laughs> All right, so uh, at our next meeting, I'll have a copy for us to sign, and we will... Uh, we could take the vote. I got a motion to approve, adopt it. Okay. It could be as of this day. We could adopt it as of this day with the change of yeah. section 3A4. And then we just have to sign. To 9 VSA chapter 137 mm -hmm. instead of 9 VSA chapter 139. That is my motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I'll accept that. Seeing no more discussion, all those in favor, seeing folks saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And what is it, 60 or 90 days? 60 days before it goes into effect, right? Yes. Okay. Congratulations, Doug. Thank you. That means I'll get all the grievances. <laughs> you wanted it, you got it. Yeah, well, I think we need it. It's useful. Light Industrial Park update. 
The update on this is a little bit lighter than I had hoped. Uh, our federal contact uh, was not able to make our meeting today. So uh, you have the nexus statement uh, based on the storm that was in uh, October, the end of October of 2017. Uh, if you recall this, we're talking about the page that was mm -hmm. misordered, so it's kind of in the middle of your packet. Uh, this statement is, the purpose of this is to help describe the need for the industrial park and how this uh, alleviates challenges that we face with uh, disasters and, and uh, risks that our downtown and our other economic development efforts face that this would alleviate. Um, we, I, I don't have a, a verdict on how strong this is or an opinion on how strong this is from the feds. Um, this is, if you recall, there are two pots of money that we qualify for under two different years. So this is kind of our first choice to go for because the, it, the money's a little more available. If this doesn't work out, we'll write a new Nexus statement and go for the other years. Okay. Uh, and the other, the disaster in the other year being the um, the ice jam flood. So we have a very strong case in both years. What's the timeline for this? Uh, our meeting was supposed to be today. I'm expecting that to be rescheduled for uh, uh, Thursday. Okay. And is this the, the one? If we get approved, we have a short runway of. We have a doing the long. The other one is the even shorter runway. This is, okay. is still a short run, runway. We've got about sixty days uh, from approval to final application. Mm -hmm. But this is a million, million two. A little over, uh, a little over a million. Uh, it'll round up a little bit higher. Uh, it, it, the board approved. Seth as our grant administrator, or I should say LCPC, uh, led by Seth as our grant administrator for this. So the cost is rising a little bit in the new draft uh, to cover their expenses, but you know, it'll be well worth it. Um, but yeah, we, uh, the meeting that we had where I was going to get an opinion on this was canceled, so I don't have a... Any reason for the cancel? Or? I, he was sick. Oh. Reason enough? Yeah. He's, I spoke to him. He believes he's going to be back in the office by. So we'll have an update Wednesday. at our regular meeting? Yep. Perfect. Sheriff's report, everybody got that? You mm -hmm. received the sheriff report by email. Um, and then notification of the county courthouse budget meeting on December 5th. We also received word on the Sheriff's budget meeting for the communications budget. Um, Monday, the a week from tonight. Yes. Whatever that is. Who's going to NEMS? You're going to NEMS. I'm going to NEMS. Who's going to county? Not me. Not you? Uh, you. I'm going to county. Okay, you're going to county. Yeah. And I'll be at the Sheriff's budget board. Okay. Howard, get out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, snuck out. Is that it? That's it. Anybody got anything else you want to bring up? Or anybody from the public? We have an opportunity here. We're done. Sue? I would simply like to voice my opinion that I was appalled by what was said here by the town employees and their attitude toward you or their bosses. I think that's totally out of whack and out of control. It's disgusting. They get the gold standard, they get raises every year. What are they complaining about? So noted. The lack of respect is astonishing. Y'all are way too patient. Out of slot from one side to take myself. Well, we're on TV. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I'm not saying anything that I think the majority of people said 
felt sitting in this room and those people in it felt that way. Anyone else? If not, stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.